This is another episode of Yo! at Home. Today we're going to be talking about minerals, we're going to be reviewing some of this, and what is a mineral? Well, the Earth was formed from a whole lot of atoms that were floating in space, formed our solar system, the stuff that didn't fall into the sun, some of it turned into the planet. So you have a bunch of atoms forming a planet. Well, what are a bunch of atoms going to do when you put them together? Well, atoms have two fundamental needs, two fundamental needs, and here they are. Right? They need to be electrically balanced. In other words, as many protons as electrons. All right. But the other thing they need to do is to fill their outer shells. They are happy when both of these things are accomplished. So very often they cannot do that by themselves. The ones that can do that by themselves are the noble elements, the noble gases. Um, but that's only a few of the different atoms. Um, helium would be the most notable example of that. Helium doesn't want to bond with anything. It doesn't play because it is electrically balanced and its outer shells are filled. So the other things that can happen are atoms can form large groups. Very specific arrangements will satisfy their needs. Now when that happens, you can get some remarkable objects. For example, this is a beautiful mineral of pyrite. You can see all the cubes here, all the different cubic lattices of the minerals coming together. Take a look at that. Is that beautiful? That's pyrite, right? That's one of the ways pyrite will form. Humans never touched this. They did not carve any of this. This forms naturally, and it's a consequence of these two things, right? This is plagioclase feldspar. And if I catch the light just right, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it does this beautiful thing called labradorescence. It's a type of feldspar called labradorite. And um, it has this notable shine to it. Again, I'm not thinking you're going to be able to see it, but if you come over to my house in person, I'll show this to you. Um, wait a year or so, but uh, it's beautiful. Um, and that's another way minerals can combine. Yet another beautiful mineral we have here is kyanite. Again, another beautiful, beautiful mineral, but both of these are the consequence. This is the consequence of both of these. This is what minerals do, right? This is a form of gypsum, right? Again, another beautiful crystal. And the other one I have here is um, called a desert rose, and this is also gypsum. How beautiful. Well, minerals will form all sorts of different arrangements. Again, it's just to satisfy these things. So there are over 4,000 minerals. But like we, like we talked about in class, you only really know, need to know about 12 to pick up and look at and understand what they are to seem like a positive genius when it comes to mineralogy and rocks. So you don't need the 4,000. About a dozen will be pretty good. How are you going to tell one mineral from, or from another? And that comes down to mineral properties. Well, what are the basic mineral properties? The first one is luster, right? Does a mineral look like a metal or not, <laughs> right? Does this look like a metal? Well, if you could see it live, perhaps better, you'd see, no, doesn't look like a metal, right? How about this one? Oh yeah, that looks like a metal. Here's another example of it. You can see this is pyrite that grows, and if you pull it off, you can see it leaves a beautiful mark. Looks like a fossil, but it's not. It is a result of the pyrite growing out of this when it metamorphoses. So this would look like a metal. This does not look like a metal. So first is luster, metallic or non-metallic. And if we look at our reference tables, very first category is metallic luster. There's one that, oh, it's so hard to tell because it really looks like a metal and a non-metal. But all the rest are either metallic or non-metallic. You see, there we don't have that big a list of the metallic minerals. You have graphite, galena, 
Magnetite, pyrite, and hematite can look like either. So really just these four you need to know. Of the non-metallics, you have quite the list there. All right. Well, what's the next category? Hardness. Now, hardness. These atoms combining, satisfying how they're going to um, balance each other, some of them will bond very weakly, which means they can break apart very weakly. Some of them bond very strongly. If you remember the Norwegian fisherman grip, brr, this will not be a bond you can break very easily at all. So minerals that have very strong bonds, we would say have a great hardness. Hardness is not anything to do with an atom. Hardness is all about the bonds between atoms. So hardness. And for the hardness, we use the Mohs hardness scale. And the Mohs hardness scale goes from 1 to 10, 10 being a diamond, the hardest, 1 being um, one of the, I mean, the softest mineral of all is talc. We use it for baby powder because it is so extremely soft. It's much softer than your skin. It won't ever cut your skin. We could make other minerals into the same sort of powder. Um, I've often talked about what would happen if we turned quartz with a hardness of seven into that powder and you tried to use it as baby powder. How much harder than your skin is quartz? So at the microscopic level, this would cut your skin terribly. So don't use quartz baby powder. <laughs> um, talc, very, very soft. Means the atoms are bonded so weakly together, the tiniest pressure pushes them apart. As you go up the scale, the atoms are bonded harder and harder until you finally get to diamond where they're bonded as hard as possible. For the hardness scale, we use a piece of glass. And if it scratches, we generally say it's hard. If it doesn't, it's soft. So hard or soft based on the hardness, okay? Um, another property, which we only use occasionally, is color. Now, when you're first starting out, you might be tempted to say this mineral is that color, or this mineral is other, the other color. Pyrite is a wonderful example of a mineral whose color is really pretty much always the same. Um, any pyrite you see is going to have that brassy yellow color. But many of the other minerals, for example, uh, feldspar. Feldspar comes in a range of colors from white to black. Um, so there's color is not really useful with that. Um, kyanite generally comes in colors similar to this, but it doesn't have to. Um, so color is sometimes useful. But it is not a primary test, just because you can be so fooled on colors. Um, the other major, another major mineral property is cleavage or fracture. And on the reference table, you can see a check mark for all the minerals that have cleavage and over here for all the minerals that have fracture. Now, why do they have some of them cleavage? Well, because in some directions, the minerals are, the atoms are bound very tight. In other directions, the atoms are bound very weakly. So if you hit it with a hammer, it'll just break off in nice, smooth sheets sometimes. Um, so this would be an example. Ooh, ooh, it caught some of the color there, just right. Uh, this would be an example of a mineral that has cleavage, right? You can see it broke beautifully there. Um, oh, there you go. You see the beautiful labradorescence of it. It is one of the prettier minerals out there. Um, but this is right along a cleavage plane, and the mineral will then just break into nice flat surfaces. So that would be um, cleavage. Um, Fracture is when it doesn't break like that. It, it has no happy direction to break, um, and it just kind of looks like a mess.
So when we're looking at minerals and you're trying to determine uh, what it is, these are some properties that will help you tremendously in figuring it out. The luster, the hardness, sometimes the color, cleavage or fracture, and then sometimes there are also special properties. <laughs> if you have it stick to a magnet, if it glows in ultraviolet light, if it fizzes when you put acid on it, that would be an indication of some of the other things that um, it might be composed of. But uh, So the special properties can be used sometimes if you're um, looking for a quick identification. But if a magnet doesn't stick to it, it's not magnetite. If it doesn't fizz when you put acid on it, it's not calcite. Um, and so on and so forth. There's a few special properties that uh, we can occasionally use. What is the point of all of this? Well, when you look around you, the number of items in your house right now that are made from things taken from the ground, you will be impressed when you start realizing how many things are made from things taken from the ground. Even your wooden counters and your wooden uh, furniture, they're all coated with some sort of lacquer, some sort of resin, something, and very often these are made from things that are taken from the ground, very often petrochemicals. So we, we mine this stuff all the time, and it is extremely important for our way of life. So minerals, when we think about our simple calculator, deep inside this, there's a little wafer of a um, silicon chip. It's a mineral, and it has some incredibly special properties. And when you think about what we use this for, the computer you're watching right now is made of minerals mined from the earth. And that is how we make the life we have. So that's the first go-round on minerals. And minerals, of course, bond together in different ways to make up rocks. And we'll get to rocks in the next episode.